Hello everybody and welcome back to Warframe the Beginner's Guide. Today we get to do sort of a different, more fun style of Beginner's Guide video because we get to talk about Ayaton sculptures, we're going to talk about mods, we're going to talk about farming from the void. I'm really, really excited about today. So let me double check that I have a sculpture. I do indeed. All right, so as you're playing missions, you're going to accumulate amber stars, cyan stars, and every once in a while you may see a sculpture drop. As you're playing missions, the stars drop more frequently. You've definitely seen them by now if you've been following the guide in your missions. They're marked on your map automatically. You wanna pick them up. By coming down to your mod bench here, and you go over to the Ayaton treasure portion, this is how you can earn more endo very easily. I hope you haven't been selling these in the inventory thus far. So a sculpture has a very low rare chance of dropping in your missions. You probably won't see them very often. I'll talk about how you can earn one once per week, however, easily. So once you have an Ayaton sculpture, you've come to the mod bench and you've clicked this section of the menu, what you can do is you can insert Ayaton stars into the different sockets of the sculpture. And notice down here, the endo value of the sculpture goes up as I keep socketing more and more of these stars. Boop. And now I've socketed all three of the stars into the sculpture and it's now worth 1800 endo. That's not bad. That's pretty useful to me. So. Once we go back up to our star chart here, by the way, I hope you guys got your Game Awards uh, cape thing. I was pretty stoked with that. I thought it looked pretty cool. And then if we come up here to Mars, there's this relay location here called Maru's Bazaar, which if you've been following the guide, you should have Mars. You guys should have done Phobos last time. So let's go to the Bazaar. Go to the Calm instance. Welcome to Maru's Bazaar. I actually don't like the color of my Warframe right now. I think I'm gonna change that up. So if we go into the relay here, that's a cool looking, wow, pretty neat. Yeah, this, this game does have public locations. So this is Maru. If I talk to her, I want to extract endo from my Ayatin items. I can then come here and look at that. I can sell my sculpture for 1800 endo, which I'm gonna do. Endo, again, is that currency we need for upgrading our mods. And I got 1,800 Endo from that. Now notice, I have, like, eight of these, 18 of these. The sculpture plus the stars was worth 1,800 right there. Whereas, you can see, if you just sell the stars, they're way, way, way less valuable. So I highly encourage you not to just sell the stars, hold on to them, and get sculptures. I'm looking for Ayatin Treasures is the weekly quest it is so hard to talk while she's talking over me it's the weekly quest in which there is a guaranteed chance the sculpture is going to spawn so we're gonna go run that real quick and we're gonna go look for the sculpture while we're at it all right so in this particular mission there's gonna be a little time trial time trial that's about to activate once I step on this plate and now I'm entering into a room that has a really big fan and I need to find a pathway across. I think it's this, yeah. Yep. It, and it's kind of buggy. I don't know why it's doing this. Stop doing this. Okay, there we go. Next, we need to figure out how I'm gonna do this one. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep, there we go. Okay, we made it through in time. Cool. Then I'm gonna just get up here and retrieve my artifact. There's my Ayaton sculpture, and I got it for the week. Pretty cool. Now bring it home. So remember, you still need to extract in order to uh, to get out of here with the item. You can't just like leave the mission right now. So. And you can just drop down here in the floor this time. If you, by the way, if you do fall down, you see since there's a fan here, it's kind of, it's like a jump puzzle, basically. So just stay up on the upper layers and know that the movement may feel a little chunky. This is a location we'll be coming back to in the near future to farm corrupted mods. But for right now, just know it's a really cool tile set. 
That is how you get your Ayatun sculpture each week. I really suggest you do that because, and, and sell it, obviously, fill it with stars and sell it, because as we get further into the game here, modding becomes even more important, and it gets really, really expensive. All right, so to progress through the series Junction, you're going to need to defeat the sergeant at Iliad on Phobos. I'll show you how to do that here in a second. That is a joke. It's a super easy thing. You can solo it. And then I'm going to show you how to take down Lieutenant Letch Krill on Mars. That one's I've got a mechanic to it that you'll want to watch and check out here. Okay, so here's our good old sergeant. He disappears. Where's the sergeant? And there he reappears. So this is the sergeant. This is a really, really easy boss fight. It's not really even a boss fight. Um, and that's the boss of Phobos. So no, shouldn't be much of a challenge for you guys at all. And he drops the mag blueprints. All right, so this is Mr. Lech Krill. And the trick with Krill is to shoot the things on his back and then have him slam the hammer at you. And then he's damageable. Do you see how he got frozen right there? Uh, if you are playing Frost, the Frost Frame, do not uh, put this guy in a bubble. You put this guy in a bubble, you're going to be in trouble. Okay, and so now his back is doing this. I have to get him to do an overhead attack. You basically need to bait out an overhead like that. And now he's damageable. And then he goes right back into an undamageable state. So we just shoot his back again. Make sure the pipes are off. And then if we get him to do an overhead... <clears throat> this boss, if you have a player using frost and he snow globes on him, it is obnoxious, dude. Let me get rid of these ads. You're being really annoying ads. Um, and it can take a while to get him to bait out the right uh, overhead. Dude, you are you are just an obnoxious little set of ads, aren't you? Get out of here. Okay, damageable. I missed the damage. Like I said, he's a pretty annoying frame, or excuse me, pretty annoying boss to deal with. Nope, not the overhead. Need the overhead. There's the overhead. Uh, I guess we didn't have the pipe blown off properly. Keep clearing the ads. There really is what's gonna have damage, you know, problems for you. There we go. Now he's damageable. Got his health pretty low. Damageable. And you can tell by his his um his health bar goes from gray to yellow, and it shows you he's in a damageable state. And that is Lech Krill. He's not very difficult to do by yourself, and it might even be better to do by yourself because a lot of new players with Frost, um, the folks with the Twitch Prime thing snow globe on him and if you snow globe on him he doesn't do the overhead attack so you can literally sit here forever especially if uh, frost players don't know how to take the snow globe off which by the way if you don't snow globe is three on frost and your number one ability if you press that on the outside edge of the snow globe while you're outside of it it'll pop the snow globe so there is lech krill and he drops the frost blueprints i highly 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 recommend farming frost Frost is a really good frame. Frost is a frame that can carry you through the entire star chart for the most part. It's freaking good and a very fun frame. So for those of you who don't have the Twitch Prime um, promotion... Oh, we got Cryo Rounds, too. This is a pretty sweet mod. Um, I highly recommend Farming Frost. All right. So at this point, Warframe really opens up in some cool ways. You begin farming endo, you begin farming mods, and you get to keep pushing the star chart along. You're going to do your series junction, you're gonna to go to series, and for right now, focus on completing series. That's like the next main goal. And the Jupiter junction, you're gonna to wanna to have your arc wing built. Uh, there's a quest line for that, it's very straightforward. You're gonna beat the bosses on series, we'll cover that in the next video. Survive 10 minutes or more on Draco and defeat a prosecutor on series. So it's a pretty straightforward junction. And then we get to Jupiter. And when we get to Jupiter, you guys, this is, you're really starting to get into the point in the game where it's starting to open up big time, okay? This is your first chance to actually go into the void, which is one of the cooler locations in the game. On void missions, there are these containers and certain locations within these missions have a chance to drop rare mods. The void is like, candy land when it comes to farming for rare mods now the best node to do so is ucko because it's a higher level 
Now, you're not going to have access to Ukko until you get to Neptune, so this is still a ways off. However, at this point in the game, the Hepit node, which is a capture mission, it's really fast. All of these, you know, had the chance to spawn these containers that we're going to be farming here in a minute. But Hepit is really good because a capture mission works super duper quickly. We just go in, we kill the target, and then we spend our time looking for those containers. And I'm going to go and do that right now and give you guys a sense of a really good way for you to farm mods there's a few mods that we're looking for in particular here, but more importantly, if you're somebody who's starting to want to get interested in trading, then um, this is a great place to start accumulating some mods that you can begin selling. So, note, it's not as good as Ukko. It's not going to be as good as the later missions, which are going to have... Like, the loot tables are kind of gated based on the level of the mission. And since this is a lower level mission, it's not going to have the same uh, mods that are going to spawn for us. We're going to be looking for flow, vital sense, continuity, and uh, cryo rounds in particular. And when you go through the, the void, you'll notice the tile set is super duper awesome. But you'll have little treasure rooms like these, which these void containers might have a mod in them. Particular rooms won't have mods in them. This, I believe, is one of those rooms that doesn't. And the only way you're going to learn which rooms do and which rooms don't is by doing this. Like doing this mission type over and over and over again. But you want to keep checking all the side rooms for those little void containers. Those void containers are going to spawn all over the place, by the way. So this is one of those rooms, these little, like, cubby containers. You see here, I stepped on a platform. It caused this little air to go up. We slice here. Boom. Rush. So generally, the first thing you want to do in these missions is uh, get your target as he totally goes poof, poof, McPoof, poof. Where are you going to go? This way or that way? Oh, there you go, buddy. Bye, buddy. And I recommend Excalibur because the Exalted Blade ability, the number four, I think it's called Exalted Blade, um, has some cool properties, like it can actually open containers through walls. And, and we're just going through the whole, you know, if you press map, you can pull it up here and you can take a look at the, the corners of the map that you want to be checking out, looking for certain things. Now, this room does have containers that have what we're looking for, might have what we're looking for in them. And... When we're out here on the void, these mods generally sell for like good platinum or they're really uh, more, what's the word, valuable for farming endo. So this is just a good thing to do if you are in, in a point where you have some spare time and you're needing to uh, start farming for stuff. I did, I did a horrible job explaining that because these enemies are going to spawn endlessly. Let me just show you what I mean here. If I pull up my codex scanner, there's containers in these little orbs. Both of them, but we can't actually get up there. So I'm gonna kill you This is why Excalibur is so useful here if I use my four ability and I slice up there Do you see how I'm breaking the containers? Okay, I'll put the blade away and then if I jump up there cool I got a 10% puncture mod. I got two mods out of the deal not the particular mods that I'm hoping for but it's still pretty cool So I'll come here and I'll do this again with this one how do you learn where these mods are and stuff? Well, you just, you play missions in the void a bunch. Oh, Thief's Wit. I talked to you guys about this in the last one. That's actually a pretty useful one. And a silver ammo stock. What we're really looking for are the rares, the golds. And scattered on these tile sets are tr uh, little treasure rooms. And these, especially parkour challenge treasure rooms. Ooh, there's an Ayatin star. Oh my gosh, the star luck is getting... Ah, see what I'm saying? Like, this is a very lucrative, lucrative place. That's the word I was looking for. Lucrative place to come and, and farm for things. And what I'm looking for in particular is a uh, parkour challenge room. Nice. This is one of those little rooms. I took an elevator down. Got There's some nice elemental mods. Or can be some nice elemental mods. Nice, so here's one of the rooms where we're going to want to open up the containers, especially on the cubbies over here. Alright, here's one of them. I'm going to step on this. Door's going to open. I'm going to drop down through here. Hopefully we don't die. And then I'm going to go right through there. I'm trying to remember where to go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember where to go. Ten seconds. We gotta get down here on the floor. Okay, cool. There you go. That's one of the little time trials right there. So then you get to go up here. And in this room, you've got all sorts of 
like mod caches, like huge mod caches. Um, I mean, container caches, they don't, it's not guaranteed that there'll be mods, but there are usually these things have, like you usually have great luck with these. Getting lots of Ayat and stars on this one though. The void is full of different kinds of those little parkour challenges, but those are what you're really looking for. Those are pretty much like the jackpot of sweet farming. Oh nice, a cephalon fragment. So if you look at our haul here, we've gotten a decent pull of mods. No rares on this go around, but we did get an argon crystal, which is pretty helpful. Control modules, which will be useful for building your warframes. And overall, this is just sort of a, a fun thing to do if you have some spare time and are looking to try and get some better mods or try and sell a bunch of mods for endo. As I mentioned earlier, Hepit is not the best for this. Ucko is going to be your best bet for farming rare mods, but you're not going to be doing Ucko for quite some time. So your next set of objectives is to get to Ceres and clear the planet of Ceres, and then we're going to be working towards Jupiter. And like I said, that's really where the game starts picking up big time. In the background, I want you going to Maru and making sure you're picking up your Ayat and Sculpture each week and start spending some time in the void now that you have access to it. It's a really, really cool tile set. And just doing the farm runs that I'm doing right now, the last 30, 40 minutes, I've accumulated a lot of very valuable resources. I've had quite a few requests to talk about trading as you guys are looking to get more slots, those of you who don't want to pay anything. Warframe.market is a really great website to get started with. You will need a clan, and that is part of how trading works. You have to trade within a dojo, or the person you're trading with can invite you into their dojo. I'll talk about this in more detail in upcoming videos. Additionally, I've been asked a lot of questions about appearance stuff. How do you change the appearance of your gear? When you come to your Warframe, if you come down here to appearance, here's where you can change all the goods. Um, you will have a bunch of pallets that are locked off to you that require platinum to purchase. The only one you have access to is the classic, which are these colors, which is pretty cool. I do recommend the classic saturated because you get a really, really good spattering of a wide array of colors. And the last thing I wanted to show off before we finish is the Captura um, system. So the Captura system is really darn cool. This is sort of a screenshot cinematic tool for for people who want to take some pictures of their warframes it essentially lets you load into um, a capture a scene by default i think you have three available to you and you can run around and you can find a cool spot be like i want to take a picture here so i'll hit g and then i'll line the camera up where i want i'm gonna actually put them like right there so we have some nice open space and i'll line them up and i'll hit x and here i can change things like my depth of field so i can hone in right where the focus is on him. And I can change basically how shallow I want my depth of field to be. You can remove the grain. You can take away scene lighting. You can uh, add scene lighting. You can do a lot of really cool things in here. And if you press F6, that's going to save a screenshot. So pretty cool little feature. So with that said, that's about going to wrap up part four of the Warframe Beginner's Guide. Thank you guys again for watching. Continue leaving your questions in the comments. I am reading them. And probably in part five, I'll do a big compilation of a bunch of your guys' questions, answering them sequentially. And I am keeping track of that. If you have any big roadblocks or things that are stalling you that you have questions for, please leave those in the comments as well. This community is super duper nice and helpful. So I, I encourage you if you're stuck or just confused or not sure what next to do, if you're playing past where this guide is at, no worries. Uh, leave those questions down below. That was the video up. If you enjoyed, I hope your week's going awesome. Good luck in Warframe, and I can't wait to talk with you next time.